In this video, we're going to be talking about how you treat a posterior or anterior canal lithiasis, and it's with a technique called the Epley Maneuver. But before we get into that, let's review how you would even know that you'd need to do an Epley Maneuver. So let's suppose you have a patient that you suspect has BPPD based on subjective reports of dizziness and also visual changes that involve the room spinning. So you perform a dix hall -Pike maneuver, and it's positive. Remember that a positive dix hall -Pike maneuver involves the production of vertical nystagmus that can either be upbeating or downbeating. The least common would be downbeating, and that implicates the anterior or superior semicircular canal. And if it's upbeating, that implicates the posterior semicircular canal. And when you assess the dix hall -Pike maneuver, you're not only assessing the direction of the nystagmus, but also the duration of the nystagmus. So let's come over here. Now, if the nystagmus lasted longer than a minute, longer than 60 seconds, that would imply a cupulothiasis of the affected canal. And these are by far less common than the canalothiases, which are when the nystagmus lasts less than a minute, less than 60 seconds. And if you have a canalothiasis of either the posterior canal or the anterior canal, then you perform what's called the Epley Maneuver. The starting patient position for the Epley Maneuver is in long sitting, as you see right here. And they're going to be long sitting on the table in a position in which when you recline them back all the way to supine, it's going to place their head over the edge of the table. That's very important, and you'll see why it's important in just a minute. Then, while still in long sitting, you're going to get the patient into position 1, which is going to be 45 degrees of cervical rotation toward the affected side or toward the ipsilateral side. So I've got her in left rotation right here. So that means we're treating a left canal. It's either a left posterior canalothiasis or a left anterior canalothiasis. Now before I move her into position 2, notice one important thing. I'm supporting her head and her neck just below the occiput. This is very important because I'm going to be reclining her back all the way to supine and her head will be dangling over the edge of the table. So having that support there does a couple of things. One, it makes her feel safe with her head supported, but also it allows me to properly position her head into the appropriate amount of extension and rotation as we go down into position two. Now getting into position two is essentially just the Dix hall -Pike maneuver. So we have 45 degrees of rotation toward the affected or ipsilateral side, in this case left, and then I'm going to recline her back quickly and notice that I'm also putting her into about 30 degrees of cervical extension. So at position two, she needs to be in 45 degrees of rotation toward the affected side and 30 degrees of cervical extension. Now position two represents our first stopping point within the Epley maneuver. So we can either wait a total of one to two minutes here or 45 seconds after her symptoms stop. And the symptoms could be nystagmus that we would observe, or it could be her self-reported dizziness, nausea, or anything like that. And we want to wait 45 seconds after those symptoms completely stop before proceeding to the next position. Now in position two, she's in 30 degrees of cervical extension and 45 degrees of rotation toward the affected side. To get to position three, I'm going to rotate her 45 degrees to the contralateral or unaffected side, in this case, the right. But there's one very important thing here to keep in mind. As you do this transition, make sure you maintain that cervical extension. Don't come into neutral as you're rotating the neck toward the other side. Keep that cervical extension. If you don't keep the cervical extension and you move it into neutral, you actually run the risk of moving some of those autoliths into the horizontal canal. And it probably won't be all of them. And so now you'll have two types of BPPV, one affecting maybe the posterior canal and the other affecting the horizontal canal. And you just make things infinitely more complicated. So make sure you maintain that cervical extension as you rotate the patient's head toward the opposite side. This is position three and another stopping point where we either wait one to two minutes or 45 seconds after the symptoms stop. 
Now to get to position four, the patient's gonna continue rotating overall in the same direction, in this case to the right or to her contralateral or unaffected side, all the way into side lying. And as she's moving into side lying, the PT is going to help facilitate getting her head into a chin tuck position as you see right here. As she's getting into the chin tuck position, she should be looking downward. So more or less into the treatment table or toward the floor, you can think about it that way. And this is the last stopping point in the Epley maneuver. So you're gonna wait a total of one to two minutes or 45 seconds after the symptoms stop. And then once you've waited the appropriate amount of time in position four, then while maintaining a chin tuck and a little bit of that rotation toward her right or contralateral or unaffected side, she's going to sit up into short sitting on the edge of the table. And then just hold there for a minute or two just to let all the symptoms, if there's any, kind of die down. And as you can see right here, the Epley maneuver can be used to treat either a posterior canalithiasis or an anterior canalithiasis. But as you can see over here, there's another treatment that you can use for an anterior canalithiasis, and it's the deep head hanging maneuver, which we're gonna cover in the next video. So make sure to join us there. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of when and how to use the Epley maneuver.